Right, okay. Welcome. Thank you ever so much for um, being here with us today. Um, we've got some fantastic content as always. Um, today we are looking at Wi-Fi 6, so it's an overview. Um, so all you need to know about Wi-Fi 6. Um, this is actually first the first webinar in a series. So we do have a couple of um, additional webinars coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, so do look out for them. Um, the other sessions will be looking a little bit more of a deeper dive around products, um, specifically around um, Ruckus and Cambium networks. Um, but for today, we're joined by Harry Druitt, who's going to be presenting. He's our solutions engineer here at Perdicom. Um, we are recording. So as usual, we will be able to follow up with um, the video after this session. And Q&A, as usual, I know you guys, you know, you've probably all been here before, um, so you know how we do this, but um, there is a Q&A panel. So do feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, but I think we'll probably run through the majority of them um, at the end. Um, we've got this session is about probably 45 minutes uh, with q and I think probably around an hour. Um, so yeah, thank you for being here, as I say, and uh, I'll pass you over to Harry and we'll get started. Thanks very much, Harry. Thanks, Carla. Morning, everybody. Hope you're well. My name's Harry Druitt. I'm a solutions engineer here at Perdicom and as discussed, we're going to take a look at Wi-Fi 6 today. So a little bit of an agenda for the, today's webinar. We'll start with an overview of um, Perdicom services we provide, etc. And then we're going to look at the current Wi-Fi landscape, challenges um, with delivering Wi-Fi, all we need to know about Wi-Fi 6, ways that Wi-Fi can transform the industry, and we're going to also going to have a quick look at Wi-Fi 6 Extended or Wi-Fi 6E, um, the future of Wi-Fi. Um, then we'll have a question and answer session and then any coming webinars in the future. Let's have a quick look at Perdicom then. So Perdicom, we're a next generation wireless networking and security distributor. We're headquartered in Oxfordshire. Um, we've got various customers across EMEA and we offer true value added support and services. So we've got about 60 full-time employees and we're growing every year. We've quadrupled in size since uh, inception in 2005. We've won multiple awards being a, a VAD. Again, yet we're established in 2005, privately owned. We're certified gold investor in people and we are ISO 9001 certified. These are some of the vendors that we carry. So we've got the Comscope offering, Cambium Networks, Ciclu, WatchGuard, ASCOM, CERTA UPS, and Encapto. And our value adds um, consists of these sort of five parameters. We've got training and technical support, logistics, finance, sales, and marketing there. So then let's have a look at the current Wi-Fi landscape. So we've got a bit of an evolution of Wi-Fi here on this slide. So Wi-Fi launched in 1997, although it doesn't say it on this uh, little infographic here, but it's uh, known as 802.11, operated on 2.4 gigahertz band, radio band, really saw sort of slow data rates up to one or two megabits a second. In 1999, the first amendments to the standard were released. So there was 802.11a and 802.11b, and they're now known as Wi-Fi 1 and 2. Um, the key differences between those two amendments to the Wi-Fi standard are the um, frequency bands. So 802.11b was solely on the 2.4 gigahertz, and 802.11a introduced the 5 gigahertz band for operation. Moving on to 2003, Wi-Fi 3 or 802.11G was introduced. And that was primarily to bring the 2.4 gigahertz radios in line with the speeds of the five gigahertz on 802.11A or Wi-Fi 1. Uh, by introducing a, a new encoding technique known as OFDM, enabled uh, the 2.4 gigahertz band to achieve the data rate of 54 megabits a second. Um, similar to 802.11a. 
we come through to 2009 with Wi-Fi 4, also known as 802.11n. This is the first major update to the standard to increase the data throughput through techniques such as MIMO, which is multiple in, multiple out. Essentially enables us to send multiple streams of data over multiple antennas at the same time and receive them at the receiving client to boost that throughput. 2013, we had 802.11ac, it's now known as Wi-Fi 5. Um, introduced features such as multi-user MIMO, so we could send multiple streams of data to multiple clients in the downlink. And uh, 256 QAM modulation, which allowed us to uh, hit a higher data rate. And then wider channel widths as well to, again, help increase that data rate dramatically. Finally, we have 2019 Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ax introduced is given a brand name by the wi-fi alliance wi-fi 6 uh, more exciting features were introduced not only to increase the speeds but also improve efficiency of our wireless networks and we're going to come on to that later in the webinar now here's a great statistic for you so now 52 percent of employees at businesses workers are only using wi-fi to connect to their networks um, we envisage this to increase. Uh, so you can see here, 2021, up to 69% of workers are only gonna be connected on Wi-Fi. It's an ever evolving landscape. People are ditching the wired medium, everybody becoming more mobile, especially with the COVID pandemic, people working from home might not necessarily have a LAN connection to their router. Everybody is going Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. So I only expect this number to increase over time. Performance really is a top concern when it comes to Wi-Fi. You can see here the capacity is the top concern of 38% of uh, respondents to this survey really sort of looked at the capacity being a concern of a wireless network um, in addition to security. Coverage a little bit less as coverage really is a given these days. Um, then you can see upgradability and reliability coming in lower as well. So really we want to focus on increasing capacity of our wireless networks and that's what wi-fi 6 aims to achieve you can see here on this uh, slide as well businesses are migrating quickly to wi-fi 6 uh, in 2019 10 percent of respondents in this survey were migrating to the wi-fi 6 standard whereas in 2021 that's jumped to 64 percent um, that's typically due to an increase of the Wi-Fi 6 APs in the market. Um, and given the, the shelf life, if you will, of a WLAN being you know, seven, eight years, it's a good time to upgrade to the latest standard to future-proof your wireless network. So why are there so many wireless choices? <laughs> So the amount of wireless choices, there's quite a few, and they all differ between the size of the area network. So we'll have a look at a wireless WAN to start with. So that's a, a wireless wired area network, connects areas together over large distances wirelessly. Technologies would include 4G, LTE or 5G, for example. Then we have the wireless MAN, so the metropolitan area network. This is really connecting buildings or nodes together within a given area. For example, a smart city or a campus. Technologies in this sector sort of include point to multi-point, point to point networking, um, three gigahertz, five gigahertz, 60 gigahertz millimeter wave, for example, 80 gigahertz. Uh, it's really for that high speed wireless connectivity between nodes in a given area. The WLAN, wireless local area network that we're all familiar with, your corporate wireless network. Technologies include 802.11, Wi-Fi, which is what we'd be looking at today. Uh, and then finally, we have the wireless personal area network. This is really focused on connecting devices together in a very small personal area, 10 meters or less, for example. Technologies include Bluetooth and Zigbee. Uh, you're gonna find a lot of IoT devices in this area. And your wireless options vary by the requirement here. So you see on the left, we've got our little infographic of data rate versus range. 
so where high data rate um, high throughput is required over a short distance you're going to be looking mostly at wi-fi but as the range increases you're going to be looking more at the wan technologies um, and where the distance decreases and the throughput decreases as well you're going to be looking at the personal area network technologies such as ble and zigbee and then on the right we have the coverage versus the capacity so you can see here outdoor the new wireless technology at the moment is 5g it's really optimized for outdoor coverage on mobile phones for example to cellular networks whereas indoor you're going to be looking at wi-fi and specifically wi-fi 6 the point of this webinar um, where the density and the capacity is increasing so let's have a look at wi-fi 6 then an introduction on wi-fi 6. in the connected world of today faster internet is constantly in demand wi-fi 6 is the next generation standard in wi-fi technology it's also known as 802.11 ax it promises faster speed over the previous wi-fi standards but again it's actually really more looking at the efficiency side of wi-fi how can we get wireless networks to be more efficient how can we deal with more clients continuously connecting in a given area and then we've got a little infographic on the right so it's a Wi-Fi 6 gives a higher power efficiency. It's four times faster than outgoing Wi-Fi 5, 82.11 AC. What a maximum achievable data rate of 10 gig, and it operates over the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz uh, radio bands. And then we've got a little infographic here as well. Wi-Fi 6 is really designed to help access points, routers, communicate with more devices at once and share data with them in the same broadcast. And you see that's going to be really beneficial as the wireless networks grow and people have more devices. So in 2014, when Wi-Fi 5 was, uh, Wave 2 was released, an average household had about five Wi-Fi devices. In 2019, homes had about nine Wi-Fi devices. Well, I certainly had a bit more than that myself, but this is on average. And then in 2025, it's predicted that homes will have around 50 Wi-Fi devices on average. To support this growth, we need the new Wi-Fi standard, Wi-Fi 6. So why is it so hard to deliver great Wi-Fi? So really down to the demand. So in 2003, there were around 500 million connected devices streaming audio content running at, for example, 128K. 2020, there's now 30 billion connected devices streaming 4K content, for example, running at around 25 megabits a second. So you've got in increased per user traffic demand, increased cellular offloading onto Wi-Fi networks, greater number of users per AP, which leads to a higher density Wi-Fi deployment. Wi-Fi generations need new hardware upgrades to keep up with this higher density that's constantly evolving. Customers need to procure new devices, new mobile phones, new APs, new routers compatible with Wi-Fi 6. Users and network operators want the same thing, secure, reliable, high-performance Wi-Fi Wi-Fi for every device, every time. Again, this, delivering this is far from easy, but it can be accomplished with the right technologies. As I talked about previously, every five to seven years, the Wi-Fi industry releases a new standard. Currently, we've just got 802.11 AX or Wi-Fi 6, and they're aimed to increase the network performance, but during the lifetime of the standard, it can't keep up with the constant need that goes beyond the standard. There's eight key categories where these issues arrive and I'll come on to those next. So these eight issues that must be addressed are the, as follows, mobility, security, infrastructure, density, interference, standards, deployment and applications. So looking at mobility, 
when a user moves out of coverage range of an access point, it must connect to another AP within the network. The WLAN must migrate the user's devices gracefully without disruption. Security. A lack of adherence to best practices for securing the network opens hackable attack surfaces for malicious actors looking to steal intellectual property, money and identities. For example, the crack exploit threatened billions of Wi-Fi devices overnight in 2017 and made headline news. Standards. With the explosion of IoT devices, a new set of wireless connectivity standards has emerged, such as Bluetooth Low Energy, Zigbee, LoRa, NB-IoT and more. The traditional AP is now tasked to support not just Wi-Fi, but these IoT standards as well. Infrastructure. Supporting infrastructure that sits behind an AP is just as important. Technologies such as multi-gigabit Ethernet, uh, 802.3bz, and the latest PoE standards like 802.3bt are critical for delivering great Wi-Fi performance. It's useless having an AP that supports ridiculously high data rates if you're just connecting it at one gigabit per second to your LAN. Deployment. Physical constraints can prevent the future, sorry, the deployment of Wi-Fi within street furniture, in vehicles and other space restricted locations such as lampposts. The delivery of Wi-Fi requires defining form factors that are not mandated by a standards body. Density. Ultra dense environments with very large numbers of users and devices present in a small area, like a stadium or a transit hub, for example, create unique challenges that lead to a deterioration in a Wi-Fi network performance. Applications, 4K video streaming, virtual reality, and live stream gaming all consume far greater bandwidth today than the 128 kilobits a second streaming music of times past. And finally, interference, walls and floors, other Wi-Fi networks apply and other appliances, backhaul networks, they can all interfere with your Wi-Fi network leading to network congestion and a poor user experience. So these eight issues, you really must address them to deliver great Wi-Fi. What's the solution? So where there is a higher client dens density, more APs are acquired but this can have a negative impact. With old standards, the capacity is hard to achieve. As more APs are added to an area, the network slows down and more latency is experienced. Wi-Fi 6 is the solution. It offers increased capacity, increased efficiency. A single AP can handle a greater number of clients, resulting in less APs, less interference. Management overhead is reduced and network access is delivered to a higher capacity of clients at a higher speed. So all you need to know about Wi-Fi 6. Welcome to the sixth generation of Wi-Fi. So 802.11ax builds on the existing strengths of 802.11ac adds efficiency, flexibility, and scalability that allow new and existing networks to increase speed and capacity with next generation applications. It is a substantial upgrade over previous generations of Wi-Fi. So the first thing, compatibility. Wi-Fi 6 is designed to be backwards compatible with the previous standards. So if you upgrade an AP, older devices are still gonna be able to connect to it. You've got older, Client devices such as mobile phones, laptops, they might not support uh, Wi-Fi 6 as of yet. They'll still be able to connect to a Wi-Fi 6 AP. They just won't be able to take advantage of the new juicy features. Efficient networking. So one of the main things about Wi-Fi 6 is data offloading. It's getting that client device on and off of the medium faster, increasing the efficiency. So handling faster speeds, transferring more data quicker. Capacity and speed. So in uh, Wi-Fi 5, we had a maximum theoretical data rate of three and a half gigabits per second. In Wi-Fi 6, that is now 9.6 gigabit per second, the maximum data rate of uh, Wi-Fi 6 across multiple bonded channels. 
And then finally, latency. Wi-Fi 6 can result in up to 75% less latency. It achieves this by handling large amounts of network traffic more efficiently. And we're going to come on to that shortly. So Wi-Fi 6 solves six problems using these six new features. OFDMA, so OFDMA allows you to connect to the Wi-Fi at the same time and exchange data simultaneously in busy and crowded places effortlessly. So going into that a little bit further, it's a new encoding mechanism that allows the access point to divide up a given channel carrier into multiple smaller subcarriers known as resource units. These resource units can then be allocated to multiple clients for transmission, improving efficiency. So it's dividing up the medium for access to more devices at one time. Multi-user MIMO. So multi-user MIMO you might be familiar with from Wi-Fi 5, 802.11ac. Um, it's where we transmit data, multiple streams of data to multiple devices. Um, in Wi-Fi 5, that was only um, possible in the downlink direction from access point to client. In Wi-Fi 6, uh, this is now bringing multi-user MIMO to the uplink direction. So it now allows multiple clients to transmit to and receive from an AP at the same time via multiple spatial streams of data. Um, this is also supported on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radio bands. So it's, it's really great for increasing that efficiency where you have multiple devices communicating at the same time. Power efficiency. So there's a new feature in Wi-Fi 6 known as target wake time. It basically lets the access point schedule a check-in time with a client device, reducing the amount of time a client device needs to keep its antennas powered on. It reduces battery drain, so it's better for the, de the client device. Ten twenty four QAM, so it enables a twenty five percent data rate increase in the new Wi Fi six APs and devices. Enables more data transfer, so that comes back to the data offloading, getting clients on and off the network and transferring their data faster. So a little bit more on that. So QAM is a quadrature amplitude modulation. It's the modulation technique used in Wi Fi to encode. Uh, works with OFDM to encode data bits. Um, essentially 1024 QAM is four times higher than the previous highest level of modulation in um, Wi-Fi 5, which was 256 QAM. It allows more data to be modulated, thus increasing the data rate. One thing to note though, it requires a very high signal to noise ratio at the receiving client to demodulate the data. The long OFDM symbol. So this works in hand with OFDMA to increase the number of subcarriers available for transmission, whilst also improving the channel robustness, which can improve quality of long distance communication by eliminating intersymbol interference and improving your signal to noise ratio. Um, quite good for outdoor reliability. And then finally, we have BSS coloring. So basic service set coloring intelligently marks uh, shared interfering channels throughout a deployment with a color code and that helps client devices to coordinate medium access more efficiently um, as it allows a device to quickly identify whether the channel is free for transmission or whether it is occupied by a device on the same BSS. So a quick summary then. Five benefits of Wi-Fi 6. Number one, exchange data simultaneously in busy, crowded places effortlessly. It allows everyone to connect onto Wi-Fi at the same time. Number two, Wi-Fi 6 helps you achieve four times faster speed. You want to download files in seconds rather than minutes and get clear video calls without any connectivity disruptions. Wi-Fi 6 helps you achieve that four times faster speed than Wi-Fi 5, providing you're in an environment that has ample signal to noise ratio. Number three, connect with multiple groups and can send and receive information at the same time. Number four, security, WPA3. WPA3 is the latest um, encryption for 
a WPA network where you have a, a password. Provides up-to-date security on your network devices, making all your connections secure. And then number five, improved power efficiency. Target wake time saves costs on power for your client devices. You don't need to be continuously charging them all the time. Uh, hopefully using them on the Wi-Fi network, you'll experience less uh, battery drain. Let's have a look at some ways Wi-Fi 6 can transform an industry. So some of the use cases for Wi-Fi 6 are as follows, mobile broadband, transportation, enterprise, smart cities, residential Wi-Fi, IoT, the manufacturing sector, smart villages, entertainment such as sports stadiums, uh, retail and high density deployments. All of these use cases can benefit from Wi-Fi 6. Essentially, areas, all areas where high density networking and high throughput is required can benefit from Wi-Fi 6. Public venues. Public venues such as airports, stadiums, theme parks, railway stations all receive a high footfall every day. Wi-Fi 6 improves the efficiency of the spectrum. It enables higher concurrent users it's better at handling latency effectively with the rise in voice traffic and it supports increased bandwidth requirements. All of those together make for a better client experience. Smart cities, increased capacity support with closer APs. Enable wireless backhaul scenarios for high throughput. Spatial efficiency through frequency reuse features. Cuts down on uh, interference. Congestion planning for smart cities and network, ways Wi-Fi 6 can transform. So let's have a, a quick look at some benefits for the hospitality industry. So having a strong Wi-Fi network is pretty much an expectation from customers these days. What are the benefits to a business of having a strong Wi-Fi network in place? So the first one is increasing customer loyalty. 49% of travellers consider Wi-Fi more important than a free breakfast. Um, the source for that is Hotels.com. A robust Wi-Fi service that guarantees customer satisfaction can drive business growth. If you've got a good Wi-Fi network at your hotel, customers are going to want to come back and use that hotel chain again. Capturing customer data. By capturing customer data such as an email address, geographical location, social media profile means that businesses are able to better target them with promotions, broadcast their own services and social media. For example, you log on to a uh, guest Wi-Fi network in a, in a hotel, you can log in with your Facebook account. Saving time and money. Being able to offer an office level Wi-Fi network or an enterprise grade Wi-Fi network within a hotel, for example, is incredibly beneficial, especially with the current ways of working due to the pandemic. Having a guest being able to successfully join a video conference anywhere will save companies time and money in the long run. Broadcasting your business. Um, going back to the social media we talked about in capturing customer data, the rise of social media, people are sharing their experiences more than ever. Users can check into a location which appears on their feeds, share a picture of the experience. Uh, it's all shared in real time. It's free organic promotion for the business, creating more awareness and reaching a wider audience that may have been missed before. Also while, while connecting to your Wi-Fi network. Preparing for IoT. Smart technology is here to stay. I mean, everybody's got an Alexa these days. They're smart light bulbs, ring doorbell, they're absolutely everywhere. We're all interacting with objects and devices in highly connected ways. By having a strong Wi-Fi network, you'll be able to build a picture of how people use it. By having a robust and safe Wi-Fi network in place, you'll be also future-proofed for when more devices come online, which inevitably they will. And then finally, staff collaboration. By using smart devices, better collaboration and communication between staff can be enabled. These are some benefits for the education sector. So the first one, efficient networking. 
data offloading can it means you can handle a faster speed with getting that client traffic on and off the network faster increased efficiency in networking and data allows more clients in a given area to connect and improves the user experience efficient management by using cloud management platforms schools colleges for example are able to easily manage multiple wireless networks across multiple campuses from one single pane of glass tasks can be automated that would take considerable time and effort if performed manually global networking both students and teachers communicate with others worldwide while in the comfort of the classroom there's also remote working now with the COVID-19 pandemic I know a lot of schools are still um, working from home Wi-Fi 6 enables your client devices to connect to your network and join these remote work, uh, learning sessions video conferences for example easily and efficiently easier collection of data students can track and take data easily gaining real-time insights that cannot be learned from textbooks increased security digital identity cards can be used to track students visitors and, and teachers improving safety school buses can be enabled with gps tracking meaning parents can know where their child's whereabouts and finally collaboration collaborative working is encouraged in schools and universities with the help of iot groups uh, help of IT groups can share information and work far easier together. But that's not all. So you've heard of Wi-Fi 6, we've just talked about that. You may have heard of Wi-Fi 6 extended. Um, what does the future look like? So let's have a look at that. Wi-Fi 6E, it's not considered a new technology, but the major difference between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E is that it operates in the six gigahertz band instead of the traditional 2.4 and five gigahertz band. So the first question you may have, can Wi-Fi 6 be upgraded to 6E? In a short answer, no, but we expect many vendors introducing new tri-band access points that support the new six gigahertz band for operation to further in increase the development of the Wi-Fi 6E standard. New APs are also expected to be backward compatible to support Wi-Fi 6E and uh, legacy Wi-Fi standards, improving application performance and end user experience. This upgrade is seen to be the biggest change to Wi-Fi in about 20 years. The technology industry is excited about Wi-Fi 6E and the changes it brings. So this is what it looks like. There's a whole entire new band for operation, six gigahertz. In the US, it's about uh, 1200 megahertz wide whereas in Europe we're going to get about 500 megahertz of spectrum but as you can see there the channel space is significant to say the least in traditional Wi-Fi networks that utilize 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz you've only got about 27 non-overlapping 20 megahertz channels 2.4 gigahertz you've only got three non-overlapping channels channel 1 6 and 11 5 gigahertz you have 25 non-overlapping 20 megahertz channels and again this drops when you're using a wider channel width to achieve a, a faster data rate current deployments are a compromise between ultimate speed and uh, self-interference from reusing channels starting with wi-fi 6e the 6 gigahertz band has been introduced for operation in wi-fi networks 6 gigahertz offers an additional 24 non-overlapping 20 megahertz channels in Europe and 59 non-overlapping 20 megahertz channels in the USA. That is absolutely huge for efficient wireless networking. It allows for the use of more unique channels throughout a deployment, dramatically reducing interference. In addition to this, where you've got, for example, a deployment where you've previously had to limit channel size to 20 megahertz um, for interference purposes we can now move to a wider channel width 
throughout whilst maintaining the same amount of non-overlapping channels. So if you've got 25 access points, for example, and you're all running an individual five gigahertz channel to have no channel overlap, with Wi-Fi 6E, we could move to a 40 megahertz channel width to increase the data rate throughout the network while still maintaining the same number of non-overlapping channels. And that is absolutely brilliant. Having the more spectrum allows you have to have more channels at wider channel width, which helps uh, improve your data throughput and your data rate whilst um, limiting the, the interference from your network on yourself. So we just talked about that uh, here, 27 non-overlapping 20 megahertz channels and then 59 in the US. Wi-Fi 60 helps to alleviate network constraints by introducing wide, wider channels with lower latency. Wi-Fi 6E is not backwards compatible um, at the moment because it's a new band and will only support OFDMA, Maltese and MIMO, 1024 QAM and 6 gigahertz capable devices. All other uh, legacy Wi-Fi devices will be limited to the previous 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band. So that's just one to be aware of. And then the little uh, diagram on the right hand side there, we've got Wi-Fi 6E brings Wi-Fi into 6 gigahertz, features more contin contiguous spectrum, wider channels, less interference, and benefits of that gigabit speeds, extremely low latency and high capacity. So I think that is going to be the end of the slides. Let's move on to some questions and answers. So I'll hand back over to Carla, if that's okay. Yes, thank you very much, Harry. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, we do actually have a few questions here. Um, so yeah, um, how does the wireless coverage of Wi-Fi 6 APs, um, how does that compare with older um, 802.11 AC APs? That's a great question. So in our experience, the coverage profile of the the two by two APs is generally similar to the Wi-Fi 5 counterpart. Um, however, in testing here at Perdicom, APs with more antennas, such as a four by four or an eight by eight, eight spatial stream AP, they seem to have a slightly smaller coverage pattern um, when compared to outgoing um, 802.11ac or Wi-Fi 5 APs. So it's maybe just one to keep in mind um, when doing a network refresh, you may have to do a bit of a redesign potentially. Um, but obviously here at Perdicom, we can help with that. We, uh, we offer a, a free sort of um, heat mapping service, desktop survey service, so get in touch. Perfect. This is a really long one, but I'm actually gonna read it out. Um, so will Wi-Fi 6 be backward compatible with um, 802.11a, 802.11b, 802.11g, 802.11n and 802.11ac. Take a breath. <laughs> so short answer on that is yes. So Wi-Fi 6 when running um, on 2.4 and 5 gig, so the Wi-Fi 6 standard as it's defined at the moment is backwards compatible with legacy devices. Um, that being said, a Wi-Fi 6 enabled client device will be required to experience the, the full benefits and features of Wi-Fi 6. Um, coming on to Wi-Fi 6E, no, it's not going to be backwards compatible with older devices as they simply don't support the 6 gigahertz radio band. Okay. Um, and um, the last one of our, our um, pre-submitted questions, can Wi-Fi 6 be used outdoors? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Wi-Fi 6 can be used outdoors. Um, whilst at first vendors were sort of concentrating on releasing internal APs, we're now seeing external grade Wi-Fi 6 APs appear on the market, um, in my opinion they're going to be really beneficial in large high density outdoor areas such as sporting arenas, festivals, um, 
crowd spaces, amphitheaters, that sort of thing. Um, certainly, as the world sort of opens back up, I'm going to see the density increase in those areas. So Wi-Fi 6 could be very beneficial. Yeah, sure. Um, a couple of other questions coming in here as well on Q&A panel. Um, so Carl asks, um, what are the recommended SNR and RSSI values for end user mobile devices when deploying a Wi-Fi 6 deployment and when conducting an ECHOHAL APOS survey? I think I've pronounced that correctly. Sure, uh, that's a very good question. Um, generally, when I'm designing, I sort of aim for next 65. Um, oh, Carl, I think you've just removed that because I... I'm sorry, if you go to <laughs> answered, I do apologise. It's just in the answered tab. Sorry, oh, yeah. too efficient. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. So, yeah, I, I generally aim for next 65 and uh, RSSI at the client device and SNR, ideally, would like to be above 30, 30 dB where possible. Great. Um, and Paul asks, um, so when is Wi-Fi 6 due for general release? Um, so Wi-Fi 6 is fully ratified at the moment. Uh, Wi-Fi 6E, I believe, is going to be released later, 2021, maybe 2022. Um, I think we're still awaiting a little bit of frequency allocation from Ofcom on that one. Excellent, which answers the next question, which was actually around dates for uh, Wi-Fi 6E. So there's, there's um, definitely an appetite for that as well. Um, another question here. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the difference between uh, two, uh, two by two and four by four, please? I work in a large education setting um, and you mentioned it earlier. Are you able to expand? Sure. So um, two by two and four by four refers to the amount of antennas an access point has. Um, and also the amount of spatial streams an access point can uh, support. So a two by two is two antennas um, and two spatial streams of data. So it can transmit out of those two antennas, two separate streams of data to a client device at any given time. Um, or it can actually transmit to two one by one client devices with a single data stream. Um, a four by four is essentially the same, but more antennas, more streams of data. And with uh, Wi-Fi 6 and to an extent Wi-Fi 5, you can transmit multiple data streams to multiple clients. So if you've got an access point that's got more antennas and is capable of supporting more spatial streams, your client density can increase because it, the, the access point can handle more devices being connected um, at the same sort of data rate. Excellent. I hope that kind of covers your question, Steve. Um, another one here. Um, are, we, uh, are there going to be any issues with iPhones and channel width configuration to stop the bandwidth from not reaching its full potential? That's a good question as well. Um, I'm not too sure, to be honest, if, if the iPhone, I'm, I'm not too savvy with an iPhone, I'm not an iPhone user, um, but if the device supports the, the channel width that is uh, sort of defined by the standard, I shouldn't see an issue with it. Um, but I know certainly in Wi-Fi 5, whilst 160 megahertz channel width was possible um, by the standard, a lot of manufacturers decided to not implement that in chipsets. So it's, it's going to be down to the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, so we've got one here from Paul. Uh, would you recommend upgrading to Wi-Fi 6 APs now or just to hold fire um, until Wi-Fi 6 E is available? Again, another great question. Um, so upgrading to Wi-Fi 6 on an existing network can straight away increase your capacity. So if you've got an absolute sort of dying need to increase the capacity of an existing network, I would say, yeah, go for it. Um, holding out for the Wi-Fi 6 compatible APs could also be an option. It really is going to sort of depend on how much client density you have, I'd have thought, really. Cool. Um, and would Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E not be worth installing if a network uh, backhaul only one gig still? I just, yeah, yep, so... 
the I, I see where you're coming from on this one. So um, with Wi-Fi 6, again, you can hit that very high data rate. Um, and a lot of access points have two and a half gigabit Ethernet or even five gigabit Ethernet ports on them. Um, I would say Wi-Fi 6 is, is still worth installing because it's more efficient. So it's going to be more efficient from a, a radio frequency point of view. So the client device end user experience will still see a benefit from it. Um, if the even if the the high data throughput, the ex, extremely high data throughput, is not being hit, and you've got a little bit of a bottleneck at the at the switching layer. Cool, cool. Um, we've got one here on chat as well from Steve. Um, so while testing Wi-Fi six, one ruckus um, user using eight o two point one x gets this. Um, uh, Disassociated, or dis I don't know, at random intervals for 30 seconds. Um, this happens irrespective of whether the session timers are set for 10 hours or 10 minutes. Um, this doesn't happen to um, R610 or older APs only, uh, the Wi Fi 6 access points. Um, so, this on Ruckus 650 and 750 APs, is this a known hardware issue um, or could it be a configuration issue? I hope I've read that out correctly, by the way. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Um, I'm not aware of this issue, um, to be honest. Um, so I, I'm not sure if it's going to be a hardware issue or a configuration issue. Um, so I couldn't really comment on that. But I would say I would like to do a bit of further investigation on it. So um, if you raise a ticket with our support desk, we'll be more than happy to assist. Yeah, we can definitely come back. So... Um, no problem there. Um, in fact, I think that was actually our last question. Um, unless there's any more, does anybody else have any other questions for, for Harry? I mean, feel free, obviously, if there's something you think of as well after the event, we're more than happy to answer questions anytime. So you can get in touch with um, either the technical team or um, your account manager. I'm more than happy to help. That's what we're here for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there was one other thing just around switching as well. Um, presumably you have to have a, um, a compatible switch for Wi-Fi 6, is that right? Um, not necessarily. So a lot of Wi-Fi 6 APs I did just touch upon have a two and a half gig or five gig gigabit Ethernet port. Um, they're going to be able to negotiate at one gig. So they'll still be able to connect to an existing one gigabit network backbone where you might see an issue is um the wi-fi 6 ap's are quite power hungry to power uh, the the additional um antennas for example an eight by eight um and the iot modules so they tend to draw more than poe plus um so tend to draw a bit more than 30 watts so you may need to implement poe injectors or have uh, 802.3 BT, which is PoE++ capable switching to deliver. I think it's up to 60 watts of power per port. Amazing. We have another question. <laughs> um, so would a newer Ruckus um, R320 or similar model be able to support Wi-Fi 6 with a firmware upgrade? Or do we need to deploy um, completely new hardware? Um, so the uh, R320 is a Wi-Fi 5 access point. So it's 802.11ac wave 2. Um, Wi-Fi 6 is, is a it's a hardware revision, so it, it will be new hardware that's required to support that. Excellent. And just to reiter uh, reiterate as well, we are going to be uh, running a couple of additional sessions. Um, so we've got one next week and one, I believe, the week after. But we can follow up with the dates in the... Um, in your follow-ups. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing a bit more of a deeper dive into vendor specific uh, products as well in the coming sessions. Um, so do sign up for that as well, because um, yeah, we'll, we'll have a lot more kind of detail around those kinds of questions in, in, in the upcoming sessions. So I hope they're, they're also useful. <clears throat> Brilliant, yes. I, th I think that's the end of the questions. Yeah, I think it is. Um, any more questions, guys, before we wrap up? 
I think we're done. Um, I'd just like to thank you all again for, for coming along today. I hope you found this session useful. Um, I certainly really enjoyed it. Thank you ever so much, Harry. And um, yeah, we can... No problem. Sorry, did you have did you have the dates on that slide? Uh, I think I might do. Yeah, here we go. So we've oh, got, we've got two them. upcoming okay. webinars. Um, yeah. One is for Cambium Networks. Um, that'll be hosted by yours truly next Tuesday the 6th. Uh, I think similar time, 10, 30, 11, something like that. And then we have a webinar on the Ruckus offering, Comscope Ruckus offering, and that'll be hosted by Mr. Alex Claro, which I'm sure you're all... Uh, very aware of I've spoken to him a lot everyone, so. knows alex. <laughs> everyone knows alex so yeah he'll be hosting the ruckus one exactly and i think we might have as well some um some assistance from uh, one of the sales guys as well so yeah it'd be a really good session both of them um so do get involved we'll send you the links um as soon as they're available um thank you ever so much and um hopefully we'll see you next week or week after or both you never know thanks for coming Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.